write a passage. Put this into six. If all angles in the triangle are up to 180. What's it like being on the receiving end of the education system? What's it like being in year eight when progress can dip? One school, four year eight children. Bradley, Jack, Louise and Robert. This series offers snapshots of four pupils' experience and perception of school. Robert's at Hove Park, a split-site school near Brighton. It's summer, and Robert loves break time. Two people are up, which is, like, on, and they have to count to, like, 20. And then people have to come and run in and try and touch a bin. And if you get, like, tackled or caught, you're on next round, and it's the first two people to get caught go on next round. <laughs> That's what we were doing on break, and then the bell went. Now, the reason we're looking at Japanese today isn't for the sake of learning some Japanese, as you know. It's to illustrate a certain linguistic concept, and the linguistic concept we're interested in today is language borrowing, loan words. Does anybody know what that means? Yes. Is it where they take it from different countries? Sorry? Is it where they like, take different words from like, different countries? That's right. Where we take a word for something we haven't got, we Wrong. borrow it from another language. I don't know why it's called borrowing, really, because you don't give it back at any point. They don't lose it. And the word that you've borrowed is called a loan word. This is a special dress worn by Japanese women on Harry Harry. Lift it up if you think you know which one it is. Hove Park's a specialist languages school, answer, and food technology has a language component. What one are we got? Is that right? Yeah. You oh. would know your Japanese, aren't you? Harry <laughs> Cat. We, we, we have two lots. That one. Right, you should have had that one. Turn that one upside down. Him or not? Him or not? We're clever. Let her do the work. Turn over because we're finished with that. You're going to get the next one wrong. <laughs> this is raw fish. <laughs> fish. Wrong. Wrong. Is it that? That. You that make up your mind. Wrong. 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 Mish. wrong. Mish. Well done. Mish. Sashimi. Sashimi. What the? I think the teachers think of me. Well, I think. Well, my tutor, Miss Harbottle, he thinks I'm really intelligent. Well, I don't. My other teachers, some of the teachers think I'm really bright and intelligent as well. But some teachers just don't like me. Never mind, it's nearly, it's nearly. Um, some of the teachers think I'm naughty and they don't like naughty students in their class. So they don't like naughty kids like me, so... Right, today's featured pulses are the soybean and the mung bean. Why do you have to do pulses? Oh, yeah. That's so boring. Pulses is the theme of year eight. Why can't we make bread or cake? That question's meaningless, in my opinion. Why can't you be quiet? Maybe we don't want to. This lesson is food technology, it's not cookery. Next lesson was French. That did not go quite so well, cos... We had a test and I did not, I don't like doing tests. Qu'est-ce que tu veux faire? Uh, je voudrais de la pêche. Mm -hmm. Et qu'est-ce que tu as fait hier? Uh, hier, nous avons joué au foot. Très bien, super. Et, et tu aimes le sport? Uh, J'ai joué au foot. Oui. Et la basket. Et tu n'aimes pas le tennis? Euh, je n'aime pas. Mm -hmm. Et demain, qu'est-ce que tu vas faire? Euh, 
the man the Vujay Fair es the Escalade. Super. Tu peux me poser des questions? Oh, ask your question. Oui, what? Um, Qu'est-ce que tu vas faire? Um, demain, je voudrais aller um, au cinéma. Uh, parquet. I don't know what that means, parquet, or that thing you want. What you said to me. Mm -hmm. Parce que that one, parquet. Pourquoi? Yeah, pourquoi? Pourquoi? Why? Pourquoi? Parce que j'adore les films. J'adore les films de science-fiction. Uh, yeah. Qu'est-ce que tu devais? Hier, je suis allé à la piscine. OK, excellent. Merci. 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 Very good, Rob. Which tenses did you have? Uh, past, yeah. future, yeah. and the present. And the present. Level five is two tenses. Level six is three tenses. So you're approaching level six with your speaking. You've asked me questions. You've responded well to all my questions. And you've got three tenses in there. So it's really, really, really good stuff. Yes, you said you need more adjectives yeah. for level six. Yeah. Level six is just more yeah. sophisticated, more yeah. stuff. I prompted you. I said, yeah. pourquoi? Why? You said, pasco. You, yeah. you knew how yeah. to add pasco. Yeah. You don't need me to say pourquoi. Yeah. So if you take more independence and add yeah. these bits yourself, yeah. which, you, which I know you can do, yeah. I think you'll be able to hit a level yeah. six. I really like football because it's energetic and fun. I've played for three teams now. My third club, the one I'm at now, is called Age Athletic, and it's the one, and it's the best one of the three because we got on trips in that, and just three weeks ago, about that, um, I went to Holland with them, and Holland was so good, and it was like, and we could learn stuff from all the Dutch kids and that, and it was really fun. And I've really enjoyed it. I've got some fab books here, which you might get some ideas from. But ain't got none in Holland. International studies. In an earlier lesson, Robert wrote facts about Holland. Now he needs to complete a form to test what he's learned. You've got a lovely selection. What have you achieved? What do you think you've achieved by it? Have you done something that you've not done before? What have you achieved? Could you shut the door, please? I don't know. You. you don't know? I've wrote so many things. I wrote so many things about Holland. So, why don't you write down, I found... I found out a lot about Holland. Like most children here in Year 8, that. Robert takes an ASDAN International Studies course oh. rather than a second language. Didn't. I didn't know. That I didn't know before. I need to know the blank colour. Right, E on the end there. Put an E on before, so it's good writing. Right. Have you been to Holland? I went three weeks ago. So you know lots about Holland, don't you? Yeah. Didn't know before. Yeah. Um, and you can put, full stop, lots of people. Lots of people. Ride bikes. Ride. I went with my football club. Oh, you your football club? Yeah. Where did you go? Amsterdam? No, Nijmegen. Nijmegen? Yeah. I don't like writing. I find it hard, but I know it up here in my head, but when it comes to writing it down on paper, I find it hard. And then I think you ought to choose something about Holland, and I've got some writing paper here. And what you could do is you could do me a little bit of writing, something you're really interested in, and then if you want to illustrate it, you can, like the others are. The class is almost empty today because of a year eight trip to the zoo. Sport and leisure, did you? Was that Amsterdam? Yes, that's Amsterdam. I've been there. It wouldn't be in Amsterdam. Is that an Amsterdam book? No, it's a Holland book. When? How are you doing, Robert? 
Doing good. Good. Right, Holland. Be very interesting to visit them. And you'll say, oh, I did that years ago when I was a little dot in school in international studies. And you think, oh, it's cold, yes. Emma. Almost. Frozen lake. Done her all I can. Done it. Oh, skating. Can you do skating? It's all about skating and it's cold now. Can you skate? What skating do you do? On ice? I can. Mm. I got lots of help from my teacher called Miss Hartley, which I do not normally like. Uh, but today was different because she actually helped me. And it was good because I got to do what I wanted to do, which was write some information about Holland and that. It's one, it's just one kilogram. Maths. Okay, then it's one point. The last lesson of the day. Robert's working with his friend Marcus, okay, who has a visual impairment and can't see the board. <sighs> Give me the hardest one then. Five tons and all that lot. They have to order a set of objects according to their mass. Yes, that will finish that chapter off for you actually. So that's done. Let me see. That's here, is it? Oh. It's the, street, the length of the street is 100 metres, yeah. and there's three lamps in it, OK? No. Then you have to work out the distance between the lamps, each lamp. How many threes are on 100? Three. Three threes on 100. It's 30, isn't it? No, it's 33. Yeah. It's 33 and a half. Right, 33 and a half metres. OK. This one's hard. 1.2 kilometres and 12, 21 lamps. Robert's currently achieving a level 5B in maths. There's a thousand metres in a kilometre. And is in set two of four with a long-term supply a teacher. Metres in a kilometre, so that's 1,000 metres. Yeah. And there's two. There's two... One point two kilometres. Is that one kilometre, two metres? Yeah. So that's 1,000 kilometres, 1,000 metres in a kilometre and two metres. And, and there's 21 lamps. 21 lamps. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm just trying to work this one out. 1,000 kilometres and 21 lamps. The distance between the lamps. Number of lamps. Oh, the distance between the lamps, OK. Well, you, if there's 21 lamps, yeah. there's one at either end. The, there are actually 20 distances, not 21. Oh. Aren't there? Yeah. So if you've got 20 distances between 21 lamps, it's a lot, it's a lot easier to work out, isn't it? Yeah. So how many metres is that, 1.2 kilometres? Uh, 1,200. 1, Would that be 600? Uh, OK, if we divide it by two, you'd get 600. But actually, we're wanting to divide it by 20. So what 60. do I do? 60. 60. 60. Uh, 60 what? 60... Lamp meters. Meters. Today, half the class wasn't there, and the teacher actually helped me. He helped me for once, because me and Marcus, who I'll sit next to helping, he didn't get it either, so we asked her and he helped us out, and then we got the hang of it. So that's 125 so, lamps. 126. Is it 125 lamps? Well, it's 125 spaces, isn't it? Yeah. 
125. difficult. The school trip means the class is half its normal size. Divided by 125. To divide by 125. Divided by 100. Can you help me with that, Marcus? 400. 400 divided by 100. Then divided by do three quarters. Well, you're on the right track. We've got to say how many 25s are there, not in 40, but in 400. Wait. One. 50. Two. No. Six, one, one hundred and sixty. Just how many hundreds are there there? There are four hundreds, but we can't have four of them. That would be too much, wouldn't it? Oh, three. So what could we have? Three. Three? Shall we try three? Yeah. How much is three times three lots of that? It's three hundred and... Seventy-five. Excellent. Thank you, Rob. So if I take that away from there, I've got just 25 left. Bring down this zero. Remember this? 250. Now there's an easy sum for you to finish with. How many 125s are here? Two. Two. 32 metres. Absolutely. What's the next one? Are you going to be able to do that one without me? You all right with that for a minute? I'll leave you to it? Yeah. OK. Right. <laughs> it's harder. It's harder. Show me how you start your bowl, right? Then you need your front arm. And it, what you do with it is you slice your target, so you slice down the widget, and then bring it through at the end. P is my favourite lesson, and the reason why is because I get to do it with my friends, and it's, it's not just writing all the time, sitting down, because you get to run about in it, and it's not and it's energetic in it, and I'm, I've got loads of energy, so I can't sit still for very long. In maths and science, Robert finished primary school slightly above national expectations, with upper level fours. All right, folks, so depending on the sort of book you're reading, I'm going to want you to ask, answer these questions in your reading journal. So if you're reading fiction, OK, you've got five questions for you to think about as you're reading. If you're reading non-fiction, which is what, Alex? This is non-factual. Okay, non-factual, good. Jack, I'm talking. Which is non-factual, folks. So if you're reading things like the uh, world record books, things like that, we want you to answer these questions. All right. So as usual, you've got ten minutes. When I say so, to go and get yourselves something to read for the lesson, folks. I don't want to see. Brad, I've not asked you to get up yet. Take a seat. Back in your seat, Brad. I don't want to see people grabbing magazines, not just yet. You'll get a chance to do that at the end of the lesson. All right, folks, ten minutes, nice and quietly, go and get yourselves a book. Oh, just leaving the man. Oh, 129, isn't it? Age of 112 years, 228 days. So old he is. Ugh, that looks horrible. God, how fit is he? <laughs> Rob, look at this. <laughs> Snapping turtle. Snapping. Oh, she can pop her eyes out 11 millimetres out of her eyes. That is a bit disgusting. Less poisonous. Yeah. Is he eating a. Sorry, that's what we're eating. This is eating a slow worm. It's a mating. Wildlife. Oh, that's brilliant. So, those sheets you've got, Rob and Andrew. Yeah. Make sure when I ask you to do it, yeah. OK, you're going to be taking some notes down. Yeah. All right? So if you go and grab your books now, I'll and on the way back, Rob, you put that chewing in a bit. Yeah. All right? Andrew, go and get your book and your sheet. Yeah. 
All right, so anybody who's been reading fiction, Jack, what have you been reading today? One fiction we've read. <laughs> Can you explain to everyone something about the characters? Try and answer this first question for us. Oh, is it the Get same one? one? Get one. Okay. Okay. Um, Jack, I'm going to stop you. Sorry. In English, Robert achieved a 4B at the end of primary school, in line with national expectations. Jack, go for it again. Um, they're, like, quite real. They don't seem to as if they're, like... At the end of Year 8, sort of he's written, still at 4B. Like they've actually got real emotions and stuff. OK, good stuff, Jack. All right, so Jack gave you a little sort of hint of what you might put if you're reading fiction, if you're trying to describe characters. In Year 7, it was really, really easy and that, and I liked it. I wish all the work was like that, but in Year 8, <laughs> it's, it's just too hard for me, and I... I actually don't know, I didn't know what to do, so I didn't know what I didn't get it. And I think that year nine is going to be too hard and I won't be able to do hardly any of the work because I think it's going to be it's going to be too hard for me, not just for me, for loads, loads of other people in there that are struggling in year eight and they're going to find year nine even harder. So I am going to struggle. All right, folks, you got an idea? OK, some of the things you might put down if you're reading fiction, if you've been reading non-fiction. What we want you to do now is open up your reading journals. You okay, and for each of those questions, okay, write me a sentence down. So each of the questions on these sheets, folks, start and write me a sentence down. So, Andre, you're going to need to come back to your chair. Right. OK, then, guys. All right, so folks. Yep. So Off we go. What were you reading? Tell us what the book's about. Yep. Sir, is this non fiction? I don't what know what it is. Fact, fiction, right. non fiction. So the book is about what? It's just about animals, not work. Explain to him why it's non fiction, Callum. The well, book is about world real. records. Non fiction. Such yep. Bad. Does that make sense, Rob? Thanks, Callum. Yeah. Four facts we got from the book goes into your blood. One for contact. You hit me. One for contact. You hit me so I can hit you back. You touch me. Is it easier or harder to read if it's a small town? That's easy to read. I think it is fast. I need to think of one more fact. Can you write down what you think is well laid out? Look at the monkey's body. Hang on. Did you know this book's exactly the same book? Marcus? What's that one? What a track. Oh, right, it's just a different front cover. Yeah. Silverback. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's the silverback too, you know. Could you find oh, out... Oh, is that bogey? Oh. That went quite well, cos I sat next to my friend, like I normally do. I got on my work, and I was done with myself, and... I... I was really good in that lesson. It's quite possible Drama. that people will be playing more than one role. You need to think about the sort of thing that you would normally hear on a broadcast about somebody who'd run away. Maybe their age, maybe the last time they were seen, maybe the sorts of clothes they were wearing, that kind of thing. The pupils are creating a television crime report. Me and Oscar have to do it together. OK, write it down. Today. Robert's imagination seems to have been stimulated by the project and he decides to write his own script. Oscar! Yesterday... Today morning, a teacher... At what, what school? Um, St John's. St John's, I do. Oscar, I've got your thing. No, I'm doing it. You just write yours, yeah? You write your script and I'll write mine, OK? You say that first, then you go over to... My name is Oscar, and I'll be doing your news today. And you go over to you, Robert, and I'll go, yesterday morning, about... 10 o'clock... Around about 10 a.m., a teacher was bad and beaten. Oscar, you say that. Uh, 
yes, okay. yesterday morning about 10 a.m. a teacher was badly no a teacher from St John's School was badly beaten has now gone missing. Okay. Um, when was he last seen? He was last seen. Oh yeah, he was last seen. Yeah. Oh yeah. Last seen about two o'clock last night. Yeah. He was last seen at London. Outside London University. Yeah. Oh yeah, the crime scene. Now this is the crime scene. No, wait, you have to... There's blood all over the place and Callum's taking pictures of it. <laughs> Callum, you're a part in this news... You can speak about all the blood on the floor and that, in the crime scene and that. Come on, all you have to do is pretend to do cameras and say a couple of words. <laughs> of the beating of the blood and everything. <laughs> Callum, you're interviewing Sam. How long ago, Throughout the lesson, Robert re-edits and perfects his script. Yesterday morning, about 10 a.m., a teacher from St John's School was badly beaten outside a shop in North Yorkshire and has now gone missing. He was last seen outside London University around 3 p.m. Okay, ladies and gents, what I would like to say is this. Ah!